Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and super excited to be participating in day one of two blog hops celebrating the Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber release for 2017. I will have a link below the video to my blog post with links and info and giveaways and all kinds of fun, just fun. It's going to be nuts this month. So this blog hop is kicking it all off. And of course I had to do Halloween theme. So in their huge release, they released the If the Hat Fits stamp set that I just think is so much fun. So I took a piece of distressed watercolor paper, the piece that's already cut down to like four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I use my anti-static powder tool first, and then I'm stamping all three of the hats from that set multiple times with Simon Says Clear Embossing Ink, and then I'm using some Detail White Embossing Powder, and stamping each image, pouring the embossing powder over it, and then going along until I coated the entire piece with that, and then I melted it with a heat tool. Didn't realize that my camera battery died in the process because I was just caught up in what I was doing. So once everything was melted with my heat tool, just taping it down to my cutting board here because I wanted to watercolor the whole background. This just helps it um, to keep it from warping. Plus I was planning on die cutting this to be a little bit smaller than the four and a quarter by five and a half. So I didn't have a problem like taping it down and worrying about the edges. So I decided to use Distress Inks for my watercoloring because I'm back on that kick using Distress Inks on everything. And I decided to use chipped sapphire for my background. Usually I would use, you know, grays or maybe a blue or something like that. But this color was just in the back of my mind. And so I pulled it out and I just, I love how this background turned out. This is not how I really intended it to be. I was going to do it a little bit paler, but I was really loving how this color, the purple really starts coming through when you add water to it. And it was just on its own getting like really, really dark close to the images and then just fading out so pretty. So I'm just going along with my water brush. I've super sped this up and just coloring in the whole background. And that's one of the perks of having all these images heat embossed is it gives me that little bit of a well so I don't have to worry as much about things bleeding into each other and making sure they're perfectly dry. I can just kind of go along and do my thing. So after I did the background, I watercolored all of the hats black. I was going to do them in different colors, but I really liked how that background color looked. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to let the hats all be black, you know, standard witches hats and then let that background kind of stand out a little bit. And then I used my colors for all of the bands around each hat. So I used black soot, of course, for the hats. That's another reason why I chose Distress Inks because when I'm doing a little black, I really prefer to watercolor it because it's less work than using, you know, Copics or colored pencils or anything like that. And you get such a nice variation with it, especially with black soot Distress Ink. It is my favorite. So I used that and then I used Wilted Violet, of course, for the purple, Carved Pumpkin for my orange, and Mowed Lawn for my green. These are like my go-to Halloween colors when it comes to the Distress line. So I just went along and colored in all of the bands and then I used um, Mustard Seed for the little buckles on the, band, or on the hats that had them. And then I couldn't resist. I want to do a little splatter because we're working with Distress Ink, but... I actually had a little bit of shimmer picked up on my water brush when I was wiping it off on the paper towel I was using that just happened to have some shimmer from um, a glitter pen or something. And you can't see it in the video, but in real life there was a little bit of shimmer and I was really liking how that looked. So I wanted to create some splatter on this, of course, because I splatter, you know, all the things. But rather than just water, I mixed some Perfect Pearls powder with the water. So it's actually a shimmery splatter and I love on this one, it is more subtle. When you hold it up to the light though, you can just see that shimmer. It's so pretty. So let everything dry and I set that aside. I wanted to create, um, a, for my card base, I want to give something a little bit of pattern. So I pulled out the new, this is the Good Reading Background Stamp. I love this. It just, it creates the perfect background. So I inked it up with Simon Says Intense Black Ink and I'm stamping that onto some Simon Says Slate Gray cardstock really like how the black looks on the dark gray. It's just, it gives it that little extra something. So standard procedure with background stamps. I always just have them face up on my work surface, ink it up, and then bring the cardstock to the stamp and then press down on the cardstock. And then I've got my whole little background stamped. So I die cut the background with the largest of the Simon Says basic rectangles dies, which is A2 size, a four and a quarter by five and a half. 
And then the watercolor background, I die cut with the second largest die. And I set those aside and I die cut some black cardstock with one of the Simon Says Stitch Circle wafer dies. And then I use the anti-static powder tool again. And then I stamped the, one of the large sentiments from the same um, If the Hat Fits stamp set. So I stamped that with the Simon Says Clear Embossing Ink and then embossed that sentiment with that same white embossing powder. I'm just holding that cardstock with my reverse tweezers so that I don't burn my fingers when I melt all of this embossing powder. And then did something that I haven't done in forever. This used to be all the rage back in the day and then it just kind of ebbs and flows. But I was going through, I don't know what I was looking at <laughs> in my studio here, but I came across this silver thread that I've had in my stash for a while and I haven't used it forever. And I was like, that would look really nice to, you know, do the whole little thread technique, wrapping around my fingers and then adhering it behind the sentiment. So that's what I did. I pulled off a bunch of that thread, wrapped it loosely around my fingers and I'd already placed foam tape behind that stamp sentiment. So that way I can stick that metallic string to the foam tape. And then I'm going to adhere that to a vellum circle that I die cut with one size larger of the stitch circle dies. And then my watercolor background, I adhered to the stamped background with some foam tape as well, just to pop it up and give it some extra dimension. So once I've got that adhered, I can adhere my sentiment. I'm just going to apply some ATG adhesive directly behind the stamp sentiment so that you can't see any of the adhesive through that little bit of vellum. And I'm going to press that onto my card front. And then my card base is some Simon Says Heavyweight White Cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So this will be a top folding A2 size card. And I'm inking up um, another one of the stamps from the set. And this one says, if the hat fits, get the matching shoes and broom. <laughs> so I inked that up with the black ink and then decided to stamp those three hats again. But to ink them up with those Distress ink colors I used to color the bands. So I'm just going to ink those up and then stamp them kind of randomly on the background of the inside of the card just to, you know, give it that little extra something, something. So once I've got those um, stamped into place, I can then adhere my card front to the card base and I'm going to use ATG adhesive for that. And like I said, I die cut that with the largest of the Simon Says basic rectangle dies. So this will cover the entire card front. So you won't even be able to see the card base once this is adhered into place. So after I finished this card, I couldn't stop. I just, the ideas started rolling and I was like, I need to create another card. <laughs> so card number one is done. For card number two, this time I decided to um, stamp one of the hats, again, onto distressed watercolor paper, but this time to stamp with um, Simon Says Intense Black Ink. So I used my Mini Misty for this because I knew I was gonna wanna stamp it multiple times since I'm stamping onto watercolor paper. This is a fairly smooth finish, but I wanted to make sure this outline was really black and crisp. So I just kept re-inking it and then closing the lid of my Misty. And then since I had my Misty out, um, I decided to stamp my sentiment while I was at it as well. I didn't need to use the Misty for this, but just it was there. So I had a scrap of the same watercolor paper and I'm going to um, use my anti-static powder tool because the sentiment I'm going to stamp with the Simon Says Clear Embossing Ink and then I'm going to heat emboss that with white embossing powder which looks like nothing when you melt it. Even in real life it's really hard to see on the Distress watercolor paper. Um, it is really difficult to see the white embossing because the paper itself is also so white which is another reason why I love it and use it so often. So coated that with the detail white embossing powder and I'm gonna melt that with my heat tool. And then I'm gonna set it aside for a minute so that I can color in this hat. And I did the exact same thing with this hat as I did um, on card number one is I'm gonna use my black soot distress ink. This time I have to be a little bit more careful because I don't have the nice little um, raised edges of the embossing. So I have to work a little bit more to keep the color from, you know, seeping everywhere because I don't want it going outside the lines. But I didn't at the when I was coloring this, but then afterwards I was like, it wouldn't have mattered if I did because I cut this out anyway, but hindsight as always. So colored that in with my water brush and that just the same um, black soot distress ink. And then the band, I did the carved pumpkin. And then once everything was dry, I'm going to trim this out with my scissors and it's really difficult for me to try and fussy cut images on, like within the camera frame just because I like hold things up very close to my face <laughs> when I'm fussy cutting. So I fussy cut out this whole image 
And then I took my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and I'm just very lightly going along the edges here and you can see it just coats that exposed white edge of the watercolor paper and it makes this look much more finished. It coats all those parts that I didn't cut perfectly and just makes everything look much more seamless. And because this is watercolor paper, again, I'm going very lightly with this marker. You don't want to hold it against the edge because those edges will wick up the color and you'll end up with like, you know, wavy black lines into your image and it'll just make a mess. So quickly coated that, set it aside, and then I had die cut this piece of um, watercolor paper that I'd stamped and embossed the sentiment on with another one of those um, stitch circle dies. And then I'm using that, I had a bunch of that chip sapphire ink still smushed onto my little palette here. So I'm just picking it up with a flat um, Ranger watercolor brush and kind of doing some basically ink resist, you know, emboss resist by watercoloring these colors over it. And I did my first layer and I wanted it deeper because I wanted that sentiment to really pop on that background. So I did a second layer of the color and I was much more happy with that. So, and of course, once I start with splatter, I can't stop. Plus this shimmer splatter definitely can't stop. So I mixed up a little bit more. I was just picking up the Perfect Pearls powder with my brush, spraying a little bit of water, using it on my acrylic block and then splattering that onto the background. And I still had a little bit left. So I mixed it with that carved pumpkin distress ink and painted that again onto this witch's hat so that the band or the ribbon is like super shimmery. Love. So I did that. And then I did the same thing for the background again because I was really liking how it looked. So I inked up the background stamp with, or the good reading background stamp with the intense black ink again. Stamped that onto the dark gray cardstock, just trying to keep my fingers from going over the edge so I don't get black ink all over my fingers. And then I'm gonna die cut that with the second largest um, basic rectangles dies. And then more splatter, because I thought that would be nice because you actually will see more of this background. So I splattered it. I didn't worry about the big splotches because those are going to get covered up, but just a nice amount of this gorgeous shimmery splatter. And then once that's dry, I'm going to adhere my die cut circle with some foam tape and then decide to add a little bit more thread, this time behind the witch's hat, just to give it that little extra something. So loosely wrapping that around my fingers and then I put foam tape on the back of the witch's hat so I can press this into the foam tape so that's going to hold it in place. And then I can just flip this over and adhere that to my die cut circle. So once I've got that um, pressed into place, I can go and create the card base for this card. So same thing, that it was the other piece of the heavyweight white cardstock that I'd cut in half. So another top folding A2 size card. And for the inside of this one, I stamped just the Happy Halloween um, sentiment and the same witch's hat decided to stamp that in black just to kind of fill in the inside a little bit more you guys know how I love to finish the insides so I stamped the hat and then stamped a little happy Halloween sentiment and then in the set there's these fun there's like star solid ish star images they got a little bit of a pattern to them and then these kind of open almost like little starburst images so I stamped the solid more solid stars with the orange ink and then the little kind of starburst type images with that chip sapphire ink to pull it all together. And then I'm going to adhere my card friend to the base with more foam tape so things all popped up and dimensional. And that finished off my cards. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is like the kickoff to Stamp September. Simon Says Stamp's biggest stamping event of the year. Definitely check out my blog post. There are giveaways and so much info there's an amazing blog hop i cannot wait to see what all the other designers created so much fun inspiration so please check out my blog post it'll be the first link in the description box below the video thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos i appreciate it so very much and i will see you all very soon in another video bye